so what we're trying to do here in this particular piece is <clears throat> looking at four different policies, four different strategies of uh, operations management and seeing which one fits where. If we know that there is a, there is a disaster which is slow and localized, which, one, which strategy would be emphasized first? which would be desirable. I mean, it's not like this is the strategy you use. It's not like that. It's not a black and white thing. But which would be desirable and which would not be desirable? That's what we are looking at. And the four strategies that we look at are, one is pre-positioning supplemental resources in or near the incident incident location. Now, this is actual pre-positioning. This is not capacity planning that I was talking about yesterday, but this is actually pre-positioning the resources, commodities. The second is proactive deployment of assets in advance of a local request. So before, uh, and, and this is especially true within a country, because before the locals ask for it, you just proactively push it down. Uh, then the third is the phased deployment of assets, which is kind of like just in time. You might have talked about just in time in your operations class. So ju uh, just in time a lot of times doesn't very well y work in disaster situations. Just in time works beautifully in the private sector supply chains because your customers are pulling the, the supply and pulling the supply is far better than pushing the supply. So, but here, what that phase deployment means is that now you know what you exactly need. Whereas before you are just, you know, either pre-positioning without knowing what the disaster is all about, or you are doing proactive deployment where you still didn't know what exactly they needed. But phased is more like you know in the sense of what vaccines are needed, especially in case of a breakout of a disease breakout because now you know the strains and therefore you can send the vaccines there or perishable items. What do you need out there? So that's that phased past. And the fourth one is surge. When everything else fails, surge, right? You just push it, you know, you just surge your supply and send it in, which a lot of times costs a lot of, lot of uh, monies. It's normally a good idea if you know already what you need no matter what, what Every disaster needs tents, needs generators, it needs batteries, it needs uh, uh, what in military they call class eight uh, supplies. You need those. So perhaps those should be sent by slow routes, which, which are cheaper to send, whereas certain supplies which are perishable or things which last minute things, you can send by plane and that because that is more expensive. So that's, that's a kind of a sort of intuitive argument that one, one can think of and, but again, one should check it if that is indeed the case. Uh, this is about pre-positioning. Uh, so pre-positioning uh, these supplemental resources near the, any incident location is very similar to what military does in uh, storing the defense inventory uh, when, when there is a conflict in sight or when there is a war to be waged. So that's what the military does and they uh, pre-position these supplies at different places. And uh, that's possibly something that military logistics is good at and perhaps humanitarian logistics could learn from it or, or actually learn and the learn meaning not, uh, not just, just you know, uh, use their, what they do for it, but perhaps what they do which doesn't work we understand that this doesn't work and that if we know what works and what doesn't work, then that's a great lesson learned. So something prepositioning that military always does. So that's one possibility. Uh, so I have this line here, NGOs also preposition items in advance of a disaster reduced time of providing relief and we were talking about that the other day. Uh, in fact, you guys are going to present that, right? So. Uh, that's, that's, there is pre-positioning going on over there too, possibly. Uh, pre-positioning, I mean, why do we do pre-positioning of supplies? Clearly, because the lead time is reduced, right? So you don't have to think about that. But at the same time, the other trade-off is that one should be aware that they're not too close to the incident locations. What else could there be? Mm -hmm.